Thoughts on Avengers Infinity War, strange, wonderful comic-related items found while packing, and a local comic shop goes out of business, and I get some deals. All of that is next. So the family and I finally saw Avengers Infinity War. I say finally. We saw it uh, the day, I guess, two days after it uh, premiered. We saw it on a Saturday. Did it premiere on Thursday or Friday? I'm not sure. I don't really care. All I know is it was a great, great movie. There are spoilers ahead. So just so, in case you didn't get that in the caption, uh, you should know it now and turn away. All right. So uh, a few thoughts on uh, Avengers Infinity War. And... Um, Yes, I do have to pull up my script, but uh, the first thing I have to say is it was worth the six-year wait. The first Avengers movie came out in 2012, and uh, that was the first tease we got of Thanos. You remember the end of that movie when uh, Thanos, we just saw Thanos turn his head a little bit uh, toward the camera, over his shoulder, and uh, that smile, and uh, everybody, of course, freaked out. All the comics fans freaked out and rejoiced. Because at that moment, they saw uh, the possibility of Infinity War coming to the big screen. And indeed, it did. And it was worth the six-year wait. This was a great movie. It was uh, action-packed, really, from start to finish. There was no time. In fact, uh, just as a little uh, uh, personal info, the family and I, we made a deal beforehand not to get any snacks or any pop. Uh, anything like the, anything to eat or drink. Because uh, we didn't want anybody having to get up and leave because we kind of thought there would be uh, no good time to leave this movie. And there wasn't. And we all made it all the way through and it was a great movie. But uh, just a few reflections on the movie. First of all, uh, I find it really interesting that they managed to make, I don't know if they tried to do this, I, I tend to think they did. But they managed to actually make Thanos a sympathetic character. Now, let me qualify that very quickly. Uh, not a hero, obviously, not, a, not, not even an anti-hero. Uh, when I say a sympathetic character, I just mean sympathetic in the sense of the same way that maybe you take, uh, you take pity on a crazy person, a person who can't tell right from wrong. Uh, Thanos honestly believed in what he was doing, wiping out half the universe uh, because he saw a, a, a finite resources and, and he saw this as a way of getting rid of people quickly and painlessly, uh, and as opposed to a lot of people starving and having long, lingering, suffering deaths. And uh, with half the populace, uh, the universe could replenish itself and keep on going. And people could keep on living. Uh, that was his plan, in short. And um, there was a scene in the movie where, if you've seen the movie, uh, when he had to sacrifice Gamora in order to uh, get the soul stone, he had to pay with a soul, basically a soul that was precious to him. And uh, you saw tears uh, streaming down Thanos' face uh, just before he um, he cast his daughter Gamora into uh, off the cliff and so into the abyss, as it were, and um, and so you know making Thanos really into this um, this character who who uh, though evil, yes, uh, sympathetic in the sense that he believed in what he was doing, which was uh, of course if you think about it, and anyone who's been with Marvel since the very beginning. I haven't been with them since the very beginning, but I'm obviously very familiar with the history, uh, beginning in 1961 on up with the inception of the Fantastic Four. Um, Marvel has always been about characters that were, were more than just two-dimensional, and Thanos was certainly a three-dimensional character in this movie. He wasn't a, a simple cut-out villain, and I don't believe he was in the comics either, if I remember correctly, but uh, I don't remember him having quite this much depth. So good job, Hollywood, uh, for... Uh, putting some some of that, keeping that character, I should say, uh, to the directors and and uh, producers behind the movie, to keeping character in that villain. Um, great interaction between the characters of Tony Stark and Doctor Strange, as well as the uh, the Guardians and uh, Tony Stark and Thor, as well as a few other characters. But um, man, there, there's just some great on-screen interaction between those two, uh, or those characters, and um, you know. Uh, of course, with Tony Stark and uh, Stephen Strange both being <clears throat> basically egotistical guys, I mean, very egotistical, very full of themselves, their own biggest fans, if you will, uh, it was it was a, uh, a no-brainer to see them, which I didn't even think about, but a no-brainer to, to, to imagine them, you know, butting heads 
and um, really not liking one another and causing sparks to fly a little bit. So that was great, great fun watching those two, inter in two interact, but also the um, just the, uh, uh, the the Thor and the Guardians and uh, with with Drax having almost this man crush on Thor, it was just so funny, uh, like the likening Thor to the to the uh, to, as if a, a pirate and an angel had a baby, you know, and and just things like that that just unexpected out of nowhere and just really a laugh out loud funny. But uh, great characterization. This is in due. This is due obviously in great part to the writing as well as to the acting ability of those. Uh, who were in these movies and or in this movie? Let me just say this: uh, Who would have thought? Who would have ever thought that someone like Dave Bautista, a, a wrestler, a professional wrestler, um, you know, would would be would do such a good job and actually steal the show in many cases uh, with his character Drax? He did in, not not necessarily Infinity War, but in the second Guardians movie. Uh, he, by far, and, and some would argue the first as well, by far had the best one-liners in the movie, the best lines in the movie. So uh, some great interaction in Avengers Infinity War. <clears throat> um, the deaths. Lots of deaths. I'm not even going to try to name all the deaths because I'll miss something or someone. But uh, all I have to say about the deaths, yes, very dramatic. And a very, uh, I will say my 15-year-old daughter, a big Loki fan, and the la one of the last things she said, we were talking about who we thought we, we would die in the movie and all kinds of speculation. A couple of us guessed Iron Man or Captain America. I think those were the two, one of the two that people were expecting one or both of them to die. But uh, my daughter, the la one of the last things she said before we got to the theater was, as long as they don't kill Loki. And uh, what was it, 10 minutes into the movie? Out of the, right out of the box, uh, Loki's dead. And so uh, I couldn't help but uh, give her a little, uh, get, have a little fun with her about that. She's not happy, and um, but I, as I've told her, uh, as, as I'm telling, as I'll tell people right now, uh, these these characters will not remain dead. Anybody who knows uh, Marvel characters or comic books in general know they will not stay dead. There may be one or two that stay dead. It'll be interesting to see if they bring the Vision back. Interesting to see if they if they bring back Agent Hill, but. Um, in the long run, most of these characters, if not all of the characters, will return. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of these deaths uh, lingered, this being uh, the cinematic universe and not the Marvel comics. Um, and so, you know, there's there's my two cents on that. Where does this movie fall in the rankings of Marvel or superhero movies? For me, too soon to tell. The new has yet to wear off. I probably wouldn't even uh, try to rank. I, I hate ranking because... In, in a sense, I don't know. Uh, I, I enjoy, there are so many aspects to movies. I, 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 it's hard for me to rank, especially when I take my favorite movies and lump them all together. It's hard for me to rank them. Uh, and uh, when I do rank them, I end up going back and, and uh, say, well, I'm switching those rankings around. I've changed my mind. This one's my, my favorite. This one's my second favorite. I don't know. Uh, if, you, if, you, if I have to give a, a, a limited ranking, it would definitely be in the top three superhero movies of all time. Uh, I still don't think it beats, uh, well, I'm not going to say. Anyway, um, too early to decide where it falls in the rankings. All right, so there's Infinity War out of the way. And um, I mentioned a couple of videos ago that we are getting ready to move. don't know a, a real timetable on that, but we are packing. And uh, there's some things, whenever you're packing up, it's strange. Uh, I'm a minister, so... In some in some respects, sometimes you end up packing, and, and everybody may be this way, you end up packing, uh, and in the process of packing, you end up unpacking one or two boxes that you never unpacked when you moved where you are now. And if that, I hope that makes sense to you. But in packing and unpack, or unpacking to pack, I uh, uncovered a few things that I'd forgotten all about. One was this book right here called Flipped. And uh, this book is by Astonish Comics. I don't know how many of you remember Astonish Comics. Uh, if you don't remember Astonish Comics, all you really need to know is Hero Bear and the Kid. All right, that uh, pretty much was Astonish Comics, I believe. And um, there's a picture of Hero Bear and the Kid right there. And uh, Hero Bear and the Kid was one of those things that uh, was a popular property. Lots of people uh, enjoyed it. As I remember, it seemed to be uh, troubled with um, delays and uh, books coming out on time, that kind of thing. 
uh, I could see it. I could have seen it as a property that could have easily become an animated feature, uh, even a straight to DVD feature, and been a, a money maker. I believe, uh, and it's just a neat property, a very, uh, you know, very, one that appeals to the inner child. But what this this flipped book is, is it is actually a, um, well, it's a flip book, and uh, what you what you get this thick book here that retailed for $9.95. And that was in the year, it's going to be in the 90s, I know that. Uh, 19, where is it? Well, I can't find it. And for the, oh, 2001, I was wrong, 2001. So 17 years ago, it was 10 bucks, all right? Here's what the book entailed. Are you ready? I'm going to show you what this book is all about. I hope we can do this. Oh, we'll do it like this. So let's try that again. All right. He has his little bear. The little boy has his little bear. The little, he drops the little bear on the floor, on the ground. The little bear becomes hero bear. And he scoops him up and he flies away. And that is the $10 flipped book. Um, I'm going to go out. I'm going to be really mean and say that's real, probably the one of the worst $10, $10 bills I ever spent in my life. Um, but I was excited to get it at the time because I thought, that might be the closest we ever get to a Hero Bear cartoon right there. And it turns out that is the closest we ever got to a Hero Bear cartoon because we still haven't got one. All right. So anyway, there's the uh, there's the uh, Astonish Comics Presents flipped book right there. Found that while unpacking to pack. Um, so uh, there. Oh, there was one other book. Pardon me. <clears throat> Actually, there might be a few or more items in here. This is one of these books that got uh, unpacked to pack. And um, I actually found some old, you know, there are some other items in here. Some old action figures that were never taken off the card, that were never opened up. There's an old uh, Le Lex Luthor, DC Comics superheroes, Lex Luthor. Um, and uh, he has a power punch uh, to help him through his life of crime. That's what it says on the, on the back. Also has a, uh, a briefcase and a, and a gun. And so there's uh, there's Lex Luthor, um, and um, also have a uh, an Action Master, or Mission Masters. I'm sorry, Batman Mission Masters three, a uh, a bodiless Mister Freeze, a head on some insect robotic legs there, or whatever spider legs. I don't know what you call that. Kind of a cool figure that I never unboxed, and that's weird because I don't do that. I mentioned the Thanos figure a while back in a video, and. I don't I don't leave figures in boxes, so that was really these are these are toys that I must have gotten for a, a song, a deal, must have gotten them on a trade or something like that. But uh now yeah. the only McFarlane figure I own, and I don't even remember again why I have it. This is what happens when you're a 50-year-old comics fan. Uh, and anything comics and comics related is you, uh, you you find stuff in boxes and you forget why you even had it to begin with. But this one, I'm not sure why it's not displayed because that is a very interesting and uh, cool looking character, Cogliostro, uh, a knight of some kind. I, I know nothing about the world of Spawn, but I do know that's a cool figure. That is a cool action figure, and he does have a removable helmet uh, to uh, you know show off there. Cogliostro, of course, like like all other uh, McFarlane figures, a very cool sculpt. And uh, that's one that, from this point, when we get to the new place, that one's going to have to be displayed, I believe, because he is a, uh, a nice-looking figure. All right, again, this is just under the, the uh, auspices of things you find when you're unpacking to pack. Here we have a, um, a mage figure. Mage is, a, uh, of course, a, a Matt Wagner creation. And there you go. Oh, just dropped his... Oh, no, that was something else. Uh, there's Mage. Uh, Kevin Matchstick, I believe, is his name, and he is there, and he does have the uh, bat inside uh, the bag there. The bag opens with Velcro, and he has his magic bat. Of course, those who know, so, uh, Kevin Matchstick was something like a type of King Arthur. The bat was uh, King Arthur's sword, Excalibur, and uh, so there you go. There's that. Uh, seems like there's something else in there. What else is in there? Oh, another hand. We got a fist uh, for Kevin Matchstick. All right, so there you go. Things you find when you're unpacking to pack, and 
Some of you out there will know what I'm talking about on that. Uh, there are some other things in here. Let's see if I can get the bat back in there. All right, there we go. Um, <clears throat> did fine. Used to be a big Usagi Yojimbo fan. And uh, there's Usagi. And I, I don't believe that was one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. I believe that was one put out by, um, uh, I'm not sure what company, but I got it. I remember getting it through Previews Magazine. Spot. You have Spot with him. And he does have uh, a couple of swords. He has his, uh, he has a spear. He has a spear and a sword. Where's his sword? There's his sword. So there you go. Your fully outfitted Usagi figure with Spot and a spear and a sword. Things you find unpacking to pack. These will go back into a box and uh, they will go to the next place. Not sure if they'll be displayed or not. The Cogliostro will. Uh, let's see. I have a few other things in here. I do have a, uh, a bent up. And I remember when this happened, actually, when I found this. I have these bent up Usagi Ojimbo cards. And I don't remember how I got them, but I do know that that one right there is signed and illustrated by Stan Sakai, the creator of Usagi Ojimbo. But it's bent. What the heck? How does that happen? How does a thing like that even happen? And um, so, you know, still kind of cool to have. Uh, a little bit a little bit heartbreaking. Now, here's something else I found in this box. This is the box that never ends. Um, I found some Jack Kirby premium collectible trading cards. The comic art tribute. Comic art tribute to Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. All right, and um, let's see if we can get a few of these out, out here. And just some various uh, Jack Kirby illustrations huh, and covers uh, from Golden Age books, win a prize. Let's just kind of go through. There's a uh, Speed Boy, uh, Jack Kirby, Joe Simon creation. Uh, let's see if we can. Hey, there's a. Uh, Angel from Boys Ranch. If you've ever read any of the Boys Ranch adventures, you know some of those characters there. And so just some uh, various Kirby Simon creations in that. I'm not sure why I bought this. Well, I know why I bought this collection because it was Kirby. And it was fairly affordable on eBay when I found it. But, uh, you know, it's Kirby. It's one of those things that you just don't see every day. And uh, something that worth at the very least packing away in a box and never looking at again so uh the uh, comic art tribute to joe simon and jack kirby there you go um anything else in here noteworthy there's a c3po pez dispenser the things you find packing or unpacking to pack now there is one other com well these are all comic related obviously hey look at that there's a red tornado JLA figure, Red Tornado, uh, Justice League of America. This was back in the time when they were also doing some Young Justice figures, I believe. Uh, this is from from um, the 90s, 1999, as this, this one is dated. And so, um, so just some various, uh, various items there. Go back in there. There you go. All right. There's a box. Nothing in the box. Okay. Now, one other item from this box, as I'm unpacking to pack, that I wanted to show you. It, I showed you the big flip book from Astonished Comics Presents. And I actually found another flip book. And this was a flip book that um, was a sampler. And I know that I got this, I got this uh, during my uh, day's writing for Michael Vance's Suspended Animation Comic Book Review. Now, review column. Uh, suspended Animation was a syndicated column, first syndicated in newspapers. Uh, it was also um, comic, uh, Michael Vance uh, also reviewed comics for this, he, for a while. He had two different, uh, two other partners on this uh, column before I came along. I co-wrote it for 10 years, uh, from about 2000 to about 2010. And before me, uh, there was a guy named John Souter, who was actually a college professor and a comic book fan. 
And then before him was a guy named R.A. Jones, who is a comic book writer, has written for Marvel and um, in various uh, independent companies. Um, and R.A. R.A. Jones actually is the uh, creator of Bulletproof Monk. And so, uh, you know, he, he wrote, uh, he wrote this column with Michael, but I got this as a, as a gift, uh, and as kind of a promo, uh, from Dark Horse when I was writing reviews, uh, for, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Vance's suspended animation. And, um, so anyway, and it is, it is dated 2003. What we have here, very interestingly, this is going to be tough to do, is we have some flip cartoons or some flip whatever you want to call it, of three different characters. You have Ghost, you have Concrete, you have Nexus, and you have, um, I believe the other one was Metabarons. Now, for those of you who don't remember Metabarons, it was something. Uh, Metabarons was a humanoids, I believe, publication or a property. I can't even remember the, the creators on it. I can't remember the creators on it. I'm not a wellspring, an encyclopedia of comic knowledge like some of my friends are, like some others are. But um, it was a great uh, European comic that was brought, translated to English and brought to America. It was just a great book. But I'm going to see if I can do this. Um, yeah, first there you have the, uh, you have a Nexus. Huh, that's, that's tough. I'm going to try a little trick here. Let's see if this works. No, it doesn't work. Well, anyway, flip book. They have, let's see if the ghost one works. A little lighter. And it's just ghost walking. You have ghost walking, and then you have concrete walking underneath the ocean. Fish swimming by. And there you go. There you go. All right. There's concrete and ghost. There's Nexus catching some energy and then shooting a bolt back. Uh, the the Metabarons are just too dark. So anyway... Things you find unpacking to pack. All right. Now, lastly, um, there was a comic book store in in Claremore, Oklahoma, from which I'm not too far, and um, they uh, called Mad Dogs Emporium. Mad Dogs Emporium just recently went out of business, and uh, it was a great shop. Uh, Steve, the owner, was a great guy, a comics fan, uh, sports fan. He had, it was actually a comic book store and and a sports card store. And uh, my, my boys especially loved it. That was, it was a store that my, my daughter, when she was about 14, made her first big comics deal at. She uh, bought, a, um, she bought uh, a whole box of Archie comics and a couple of trade paperbacks and what I believe is the only uh, Archie treasury ever produced. And uh, I, uh, I, I took that as my, um, what do you call a, uh, someone who facilitates a deal? Uh, you know, you in, in the vein of you never would have found this deal if it wasn't for me. Uh, anyway, that's what I, my finder's fee, I suppose. Uh, I took the treasury as my finder's fee. She was fine with it. She knows she can read it anytime she wants. And it's marked up and someone's worked all the puzzles and stuff in it anyway. So uh, anyway, uh, Mad Dogs Comics Emporium is going out of business or has gone out of business. And uh, he was doing some great sales. I'm going to just go through what I what I got and then tell you what I spent. But here's... Uh, you, I mentioned a while back that I was working on a Blue Beetle run, uh, the DC uh, Blue Beetle series from the 80s, uh, found number number 10, which I did not have yet, fit nicely into my collection, um, number 10, Blue Beetle there, um, pay no attention to the price tags because they mean nothing, because again, he was running a sale. Uh, I, I really like the independent comics from the, uh, especially the 80s, but the early 90s as well, early to mid 90s. Um, that, that were maybe just one or two issue uh, comics and then never were seen again. Uh, they're, a lot of them are fairly rare, and uh, a lot of them have decent art and, and interesting covers. Well, this one's called Karate Creatures, and um, MA Comics, Premier Edition, number one, uh, Karate Creatures, and there it is, Karate Creatures, uh, inspired, no doubt, by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and um, so I, I just I, I saw that. Had to have it. Now, the deal that that uh, he was running here was that says two dollars. It was half off plus buy one get one free. So two comics that run two dollars, you got basically for a buck. Half off is a dollar, and then you get another one free. Got a Web of Spider-Man number two, and uh, Web of Spider-Man was a great series, especially the first 20, 25 issues or so. 
Um, so uh, nice shape, a uh, little bit of a slight roll on the spine, probably will give it a pressing, uh, but that was, um, that was $4, and so I got it for $2, and along with it, I got uh, this other $4 comic, uh, Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man Annual number 7. With that great cover, I know everybody likes those Amazing Spider-Man Annual covers of The Wedding, one with Peter Parker and his tux, and one with Spider-Man, but uh, I like this one. Uh, this was, um, it says, are you ready for the honeymoon? And you have Puma there tearing uh, the cover of amazing, that Amazing Spider-Man annual. I don't remember what number it was. It looks like 21, annual 21. Um, but uh, got, those, got that one and the Web of Spider-Man number two. Really nice shape for $2. And then lastly, for, uh, I'd never even heard of Avengers The Origin. Avengers The Origin was a uh, miniseries. Uh, written by Joe Casey, drawn by Phil Noto, and um, looked like it was a five-issue miniseries, and I got the trade, three dollars. So basically, all said and done, all the trade paperback and those four comics uh, came in a little under six bucks. So not a bad deal, you know. Not a, didn't drop a lot of coin, and don't have to. That uh, great, you know. Sometimes when you find a great deal, you got five or six bucks, you can get you a handful of decent comics. All right. So anyway, hey, that's all I've got. That's all I've got today. In fact, I'm not sure how many more videos I'll be able to uh, get out there before the move. But uh, hey, listen, I appreciate those who have subscribed and those who watch incidentally. Uh, thanks for watching Four Color Commentary. Come on back and uh, watch some more. And if you haven't yet, get out there and see uh, Avengers Infinity War. You will not be sorry. Won't be sorry if you go see it again either. Thanks for watching Four Color Commentary.